Amen. And Sister Cindy. And if you have your Bibles in your phones that you're watching with, I don't know if you can do both of those at the same time. Though. But uh, we'll be in Matthew 28. Matthew 28. And that's okay, that paper. <laughs> Matthew 28 and verse 9 through 15 is going to be our main scripture this morning as we look at the last words of our Lord and Savior Jesus, or our first words of the Lord and Savior after he came out of the tomb. Amazing to me, y'all just have to realize how God has been working in all of this that we're sharing. Uh, I'll share with those that are new with us, baby. Today we've got many of you on Facebook there, and we appreciate this in the parking lot and the opportunity. Now, many of you know that for four years, over four years, we, Judy and I, had a ministry called RV Church Life, and we went to the state parks, and we held church in state parks. So this is normal for us, actually, to be out here like this for a, quite a while, and we appreciate y'all being able to join us. Sorry you're not being able to get out in the chairs like they did at the campgrounds and come up closer, But uh, and the only other difference is I didn't wear a suit in the campground. Uh, doing this just to honor our Lord this morning being Resurrection Sunday, but um, I wanted to look nice for y'all today, but normally I have on a fishing shirt or something like that when I'm preaching in the parks, but uh, that's beside the point. But back in January 2016, I started a series of messages the Lord put on my heart, the red letter words of the Bible, and um, starting with the words of Jesus from his birth and going through throughout, throughout eternity, where the Lord has spoke to us, and this is message 135, and it has to land today. And um, these words we're going to look at today, as we celebrate He is Risen on this Resurrection Sunday, we're not changing the message because of the coronavirus, because He here gives us words of encouragement during this time in which we live. It's words for today is what we need. Words of encouragement that He is in control. He is Lord. So today we'll be looking at those first words that He said to someone after he came out of the grave. And you'll notice as we begin to look at these words, according to Mark, in Mark 16, 9. Now, I know I told you Matthew, but that's where we're going to spend most of our time. But Mark 16, 9 through 11, Mark tells us that the first person that Jesus talked to after he came out of the grave was Mary Magdalene. And in Mark 9, 16, 9, it says, Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. Now, Mark didn't tell us the whole story of everything that takes place. That's why the Lord gave us four gospels, four witnesses of everything that happened during the life of Christ. Plus we have Josephus, who was just a historian and wrote many great things about the, our Lord. But the four gospels we always go to and uh, are, use them to help us to know our Lord. And so we find that as Mark didn't tell everything, but did let us know the first person that Jesus spoke to was Mary Magdalene. So what were those first words? What did he say to her? Well, so we want to glean from those words, don't we? We want to hear those words. We want to see. Now, what did he say to her? So then you go to John 20, 14. It says, now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. So the first contact that Christ had with a person when he came out of the grave reminds us actually to go back to the, another incident in the life of Christ when he stood at another grave. He stood at the grave of Lazarus, a dear friend of his. And what did he do at the grave of Lazarus? He showed compassion. He wept, the Bible says, said he groaned within him because of the pain of death and separation. He hurt. He understood. He had compassion. And here again, he is showing compassion upon the hurt and those that are disturbed, such as Mary. <coughs> Excuse me. Because 
He is not there. Now, as we will see as we continue this message, Jesus our Lord cares also about us today. He cares about us. Even to the point that when we will get along so we can hear his voice, he will speak to us if we open his word. And even as he did with Mary in John 20, 16, and said, to, uh, John 20, 16, I'm wondering why I gave you Matthew earlier. I'm with John 20, 16, okay? This is where we're going. Uh, right. No, then we'll go to Matthew 28. But John 20, 16, Jesus said to her, Mary. Isn't that amazing? He called her by name. She turned to him and said, Rabboni, which is to say, teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascended to my father and your father and to my God and your God. So apparently, uh, if now you go to Matthew 28, 9, we know that he had this according to John and Mark. He spoke to Mary first about her care, her burden that she had because he was not there. But apparently as her, and we find out in the other Gospels also, there was other ladies with her. Apparently they were not as close to the tomb or uh, right there where Jesus was and where he met Mary. But we know in Matthew 28, 9, it says, And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus came saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Now, I want you to notice there's three things, three things that just popped out to me as soon as I read Matthew 28, 9, and 10. Three specific things that the Lord said to Mary. First of all, he said, rejoice. Secondly, he said, do not be afraid. And lastly, he said, go and tell. Go and tell my brother. So is that not a message we need to hear today? Let's look at that word rejoice. Do you realize the word rejoice is in, in the New King James Version 238 times? So I think the Lord thinks we should rejoice. We have reason to rejoice. Now on this day, over 2,000 years ago, as the day began, and we've been singing about that and sharing and for the last 12 weeks we have focused our messages on the words and things that happened around the cross so this is a very dark day this sunday morning over 2000 years ago you see it was the darkest day in their life as it began you see as the day began for the followers of christ that morning it felt like there was no hope their Messiah, the Lord, the one they had trusted was going to save them, who had they put all their trust and hope in, had been crucified. He had been crucified and he had been placed in this grave. And now they come to the grave and the body's gone. There's no body there. There's nothing there. Many of you have loved ones buried in cemeteries. Many of you have loved ones buried right here in these cemeteries that are surrounding us this morning. And this is the, these cemeteries become a, a place of shrine and also a place of memories of our love that we have for our loved ones. And they become very special places to people once their loved ones are gone. Also, some at home, you may have family members in urns sitting on the cabinet or on a shelf somewhere. And, and these are sitting there on the mantles and they they keep you reminded of the love of this person and the love that you had for those people. But imagine with me how that we can understand how dark this day was for Mary and the disciples is, and those that came to the tomb that morning. Imagine if one day you were coming down the road here and all of a sudden you looked over here and there was not a tombstone. There was not a grave. It was just grass. There was nothing here but grass. You know yesterday it was here. As we look at it today. But tomorrow you come by and all of this is gone. It's just a pretty field. And maybe that urn you have. You can't find it. It's gone. It's disappeared. That would break your heart. Because those memories that you put in those shrines. As those the disciples and Mary and those women that came with her. 
that was a place that was their last connection with the Lord is knowing his body was in that grave. But they come there after the crucifixion and they're being broken hearted that he actually died. And now his body's not there. It's not there. He's gone. Not only was their redeemer and friend brutally crucified and buried, but now he's left. It's all gone. The memories, the passion, it's gone. But it's the beginning of the day is not the end, right? The beginning of the day is not the end, but the beginning of a reason and a time to rejoice. As even today, many of us are not sure what our world is going to look like after this coronavirus. We're unsure about a lot of things and what's going to take place. Yet, can you hear those same words that he spoke to Mary? Can he be speaking them to us today? Can you hear, though it may look like the end of everything that we hold dear and we have got accustomed to and used to, could it be sounds of the beginnings? Could we be hearing the sounds of the beginning of the greatest opportunity of our lives to really draw close to him and become the church and be what he would have us to be? Could this that we're standing to be with one another to honor our Lord and to have that fellowship that he has brought us to, could this not be the end, but the beginning of a great revival that the Lord is wont to send us if we'll begin to rejoice. Can you hear his words of encouragement to rejoice? I'm going to share with you several other places. I think I'm not going to give you all the 238 places it says rejoice, but just a few. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 12, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who are for you. Yes, there's going to be persecution. Even this week, I've had some persecution. I don't know about y'all. Even for people who claim to be Christians. Yes, they persecute us. But rejoice, he said, and be exceedingly glad in this because it's been going on since the beginning. It's going to continue. In John 16, 22, he said, Therefore, you now have sorrow. Yes, we're sorrowful about some things. But I will see you again. And your heart will rejoice. And your joy no more will be taken from you. Paul goes on to say one of our favorite scriptures that we've come across during this time. In Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. That the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Paul also said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 again, he says, rejoice always. And we can go even back to the Old Testament and David sang the song in Psalms 5, 11. He says, but let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. So no matter where we're at, rejoice because we have read the end of the book and we know how it ends. In Revelation 19, 7, it says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. Amen? Praise the Lord. We make ourselves ready and it's going to come about. Now, the other words he said to her after he said rejoice, he said words that our world needs to hear today, especially those that belong to the Lord. He said, be not afraid. Now that is in the Bible 83 times. Be not afraid. So maybe we should hear that, right? We should hear those words. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Remember, the words from our Lord, he said to Israel, when they were in great battle and problems, in Isaiah 41.10, he says, fear not. For I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Solomon proclaimed his faith when, you know, a lot of people say, I can't sleep. Well, where's your trust? Where's your trust if you can't sleep, if you can't get rest? Solomon provided something for us and shared with us in Proverbs 3.24. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. 
Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. I've had some sweet sleep lately because I know who I am and who I am in. And he's in me. I know my Lord and my Savior. So, yes, there's problems, there's concerns that bother me. But, yes, but I can rest if I know who is in control. My rest can be sweet, my sleep. Yes, things are bad. And they can get worse. Yes, they can. But Jesus talked about that many times to, uh, to his followers, about suffering because of the relationship with, with him. But he reminded us that though they can, we may see our bodies hurt and destroyed and, and people come against us and Satan come against us. People, they can't take our salvation. Luke 12, 4, Jesus says, I say to you, my friend, do not be afraid of those who kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. See, this body is just a tent. It's just a temporary body anyway. It's just, it was, it started dying the moment it was born. It started decaying and coming apart the day it was born. We were set for a time and a time to prepare to know Him as our Lord and Savior because we want to spend those that know Him and are born again, bought by the blood of Christ and come to Him and repent and make Him Lord and Savior of their life that we can come and know that one day, yes, Lord, this body may be laid in a grave or in a urn somewhere, but by my being, who I am, will have a new body like that at the Lord that He had that day and will be able to rejoice with Him throughout eternity and praise and honor Him. And Jesus gives us a, a cause today to rejoice and not to be afraid. In John 14, 27, in this day we live, he says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, the church, America, and this world has failed to learn and understand. There's a lesson here today. There's a lesson in all that is taking place around us. People, we don't rejoice because things are good and going great around us because we got a good job and we got plenty of food on the table and there's no war and there's no crisis and it, it looks good. That's not the reason we rejoice. We rejoice today because God is good and because He is God on the mountain. Yes, he's God on the mountain tops and in the good times. But remember that song by the McCamey's. He is God in the valley. He is God in the deep, dark valleys and the difficult times. He's still God. He's still in control. If you read the book, you'll understand it. If you'll read his words, he is in control. He knows what's taking place. He is in us, through us, and will be with us as he was with the three Hebrew children. Oh, they got through in the fire. They got through in the fire for their witness. But where did we find the Lord? In the fire with them. He'll be with you no matter where you are. We rejoice and are not afraid because of his amazing grace given toward us. Jesus said to his disciples, and he says to each of us today in Luke 10, 20, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. People, that's the key. That's the key to this peace and knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. And our name is written in heaven. Rejoice, he says, because of that. Celebrate it. And then lastly, the words, the last words he said to her there that uh, really just stood out to me. And it's in the Bible 77 times. Go and tell. Go and tell. See, it is rejoicing time because we have nothing to fear. But there's a word that in this world we live in, there's a lot out there who have not heard the good news. There's so many who have not heard the good news. We must go and tell. Jesus told Mary and those with her that day, go and tell the good news. He is risen. Amen. He's alive. Blow them horns again. He's alive. Celebrate. He's alive. He is risen. And we're to go tell that everywhere we go. Go tell. See, Jesus once said in Matthew 10, 27, Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And whatever you hear in the ear, preach from the housetops. 
Did you notice he didn't say from the church? He didn't say preach from the church. He said preach from the housetops. He said go to your houses. Go to your homes. Live as though others can see Christ in you. Preach the word. That they will know. They will hear. Preach the word. So maybe that's what Corona is all about. Getting the church outside the walls. We've been needing to do that a long time. As I said, I did it four years ago. We went out and we started preaching just outside on the streets. Wherever people would listen. We've got to get outside the walls. We've got to live at church. We've got to be different. That they will know Christ. They will know Christ. Get outside. He said, go. Notice where he told them to go, though. Matthew 28, 10. And Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. He told them, or he told Mary and the ones that were there at the tomb, go where the disciples are. Go to right there. Go preach it from the house. Go to where they are. They're not here. They're grieving. They're hurting. They're in pain. Go to them. They're hiding out of fear. They're fearful. Go with them. Go to them. And then what are you supposed to tell them when you get there? What are you supposed to tell them when you get there? He says, tell them to go. Tell them to go to Galilee. That I will meet them there. Go. So we are to go. Take the word today. He is risen. He is alive. He is Lord. He is in control. And we're supposed to go to our homes and our places of work or schools, wherever you go, and tell them to go. Go meet the Lord. Go meet the Lord. He will meet you there when you are ready and you come to him and repent of your sin. Go. So I'm leaving you with these words of it from the angels this morning and from our Lord to Mary Magdalene because the angels also said the same message in Matthew 28 7 it says and go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead and indeed he is going before you into Galilee there you will see him behold I have told you the angels have told us Jesus has told us to go and go tell them to go Jesus said again I'm gonna read this one more time for you this morning Matthew 28, 9 through 10. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet, and they worshipped him. What a time to worship, people. Another message right there. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Do you know what Mary did? heard in words go back to mark mark 16 9 we started with this verse mark 16 9 and when he rose early on the first day of the week he appeared first to mary magdalene out of whom he cast the seven demons and she went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept so she did what he told her to do right she went and when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her they did not believe. I hope you believe today. I hope you believe today. If so, what are you going to do today? Hopefully, follow the Great Commission. And the instructions of Jesus to Mary. Rejoice. Be not afraid. Go and tell. Go and tell today. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, man... This is a time to be challenged by our Lord, by the things around us, and say, Lord, yes, it's time for me to rejoice and let others know that I'm not afraid because I'm with you. Tell them to go, that they can come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do not know him today, and if you're fearful today, Romans 5, 12 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all have sinned. We all deserve hell. I deserve hell. I do. You do too. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin, that we've all sinned, is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrated His love toward us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. While we're still sinners, He loved us and died for us. Don't you want to know that love? Don't you want to know Him as your Lord and Savior? Romans 10, 9, 13 says, 
that if we confess with your mouth, or if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, should not be put to shame. For whosoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you will find somebody that you know who knows the Lord. And you say, would you just pray with me as I pray? Yes, nobody can take you to the Lord but yourself. He, if he's calling and he's convicting you, but once you know him, share it. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed. I was so excited. Just the Sunday before, <clears throat> this, they started telling us not to have church, I think, or maybe two Sundays before. Uh, we went to Taco Bell, and there was a young man with his family in there, and he was just telling everybody about Jesus. He had just got baptized. He just got saved the week before and didn't follow the Lord and believers' baptism. He was excited. When God gets a hold of you and saves you and gives you that peace and that joy, that indwelling of the Holy Spirit, then you got it, <clears throat> and you want to tell it. You don't have to be told to tell it. Would you pray with us? Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for this privilege to share your word through the, the means of the World Wide Web. Lord, and those who will hear it, and thank you for the, this platform to stand from today and the ability to speak out even to cars and across this land in, in physical beings, Lord, our hearing. And we pray that you would touch, Lord, their, their lives. And you, the, everyone, Lord, today, that if they know you as their Lord and Savior, may this be a time today to rejoice in what you are doing. And Lord, may we be a part, of, be thankful that we can be a part of sharing your word and go and tell. And those who have prayed the prayer today and said, Lord, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner. Lord, but I need salvation today. I want that peace. I want that joy. Lord, I pray that they will rejoice and share with others today what you're doing in their life. And they will find a church, Lord, a church family, a group that they can get together with and be discipled and grow in their walk with you. Be glorified through each of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And today is a very appropriate day to end as I end a lot of times. Live today. Live this week. Live today especially as though he died yesterday and he arose this morning and he's coming back tomorrow. May he be glorified and honored. Our Lord and Savior. Amen. Blow them horns again. Let's have some fun. Thank the Lord. Amen. Risen. Amen. Thank you. Amen.